If you don't mind, what I'll do is I'll turn on one of the bright lights at all.
we're so glad you could join us tonight. How's that sound? Oh, look, hi. Hi. Come on in. We're so glad you could join us. There's a person wandering around with food. I feel the desire to tell them where to go. <laughs> Can't do it all. So we're going to start um, with a little music with Spencer Lewis, and then we're going to have a program. Well, we are having a program, despite the anarchist tendencies of all involved. And as Spencer sings to us, we'll make sure that Linda is here with us. Spencer Lewis, thanks so much. everyone thank you so much for joining us on behalf of Nat's family and friends we're so glad that you could be here I'm Lauren Glenn Davidian I had the privilege of working with Nat for many years at CCTV 
And I did want to just let you know that we will be having a meal after this, and the restrooms are in the back that way, in case you need them. And we're going to start, um, we have a program that's sort of loose here, um, <laughs> but I'd like you to just consider at some point, if you'd like to share some comments, there is an open forum, as makes sense in any democratic institution. <laughs> And we're going to start with Linda Eyre, Nat's beloved wife. Thanks to a good friend who brought me this. I don't know where you are, but thank you for it. Welcome, everybody. Myself, Damon, Toby, and Zimmy. Thank you for being here with us. Today, I'm going to have to read this. I didn't practice it, and I just finished writing it. <laughs> today, is, today, this is our community, our caress, our mishpuka. I wish to recognize that as a community, we have lost a lot of people. Husbands, wives, fathers, mothers, sons and daughters, friends, and activists. Today we're celebrating Nat, a builder of community, who was a husband, a father, a brother, a grandfather, friend, and a colleague. He was kind, loving, quirky, angry, shy, friendly, honest, hardworking, inclusive, supportive, often very quietly. I used to, you've probably seen me bring a whole bunch of stuff to different places, catering, and that did the quiet work in the background. He would fill the car, he would empty the car, he'd do all the dishes, and one time he said, does anybody know I do all this? <laughs> and I don't think I ever told anybody well enough, so I'm telling you now. <laughs> okay, I lost my space, there we go. He was a gifted tennis, soccer, and hockey player. His final year at Milton Academy, he was picked to be the captain of all three. Uh, but the coach decided that two cap captaincies were enough and he had to spread the wealth. Nat loved sailing and canoeing, anything that put him on the water. He devoured books, primarily mysteries, Dick Francis, Robert Parker, but also Proust, and Harry Potter. He had a wondrous sense and love of nature, whether it be trees, plants, fiddler crabs, dogs, squirrels, horses, and spiders. He loved babies. We often refer to him as the baby whisperer. Then, of course, there's Bob Dylan. <laughs> I think some of you know that. <laughs> he had an encyclopedic knowledge of Dylan and traded bootlegs around the world. He would hide his tape recorder under his jacket and I hid the camera under my dress. And we were successful sometimes. <laughs> when pressed for his favorite songs, his list was amazing. He would say, oh yes, oops, I have the right, oh, I maybe don't have it anymore. Anyway, what he would say is, yes, uh, Blowing the Wind, Paris, 1974, uh, I can't think of any, Tangled Up in Blue, oh yes, that was Poland, 93, <laughs> and he could identify those songs and where they were from.
All of his CDs had little sticky notes. And those who have ever worked with him know about Nat and his sticky notes. He said they were one of the best things ever invented. We, we do have sticky notes outside that people can write on and we can read them later. We don't have an entry book, so you could use that as a way to do that if you'd like. Nat used to make beautiful furniture and there's a piece outside that he did. It's gorgeous, all, all dovetails, curly maple, bird's eye, just wonderful. He certainly taught me an appreciation of wood. He then helped to start Depot Woodworking. Uh, what does that say? Oops, sorry. Okay. Um, Depot Woodworking, wood's good. To foster camaraderie, he, he created the Depot newsletter, complete with jokes and puzzles. He used to write actually for the Middlebury paper when he was there for a, a short time. Then came CCTV. A lot of you know him through his work. I wish Bernie was here. He did a lot of work with Bernie. And actually one time I called into an AARP call that was statewide and I wanted to say something glowing about Bernie. And they put him on and I said, hi, it's Linda Ayer. And he goes, oh, Linda and Nat, old good friends of mine. But why are those tapes resurfacing now? I don't know if some of you saw them, but they were pretty silly, some of them. Uh, okay. So he shot a lot of video. That's an understatement. He created a channel that was 24-7. I don't know if YouTube existed then, but he you guys just figured it out on your own. He loved it. He would work up to 16 hours a day, and the TV was always on to Channel 17. I missed a lot of shows. <laughs> a couple of short vignettes, and then I think I'm done. Um, you probably all are aware of Nat being slow to speak, or if you aren't, that's the way he was. He always was thinking, what do they want me to say? What, do they, what are they saying? What do they need from me? Lisa Kiley is an old friend, and she met a friend of hers who told her she just met the most amazing man. He thinks before he talks. <laughs> And then Lisa said to her, was it Nat Air? <laughs> Toby, our middle son, traveled to France for three weeks when he was in high school. And the deal was, you know, long distance calls, they cost a lot of money, that he would call Nat and I, and we would pass the info on to Kit, Nat's first wife. Well, Toby is another man of few words. He called but he spoke to Nat. I called Kit, who started asking the questions that I wanted to know, too, and had asked Nat, but then I realized and told Kit, Nat and Toby spoke. And she said, oh. <laughs> so I think that's it for me now. I may come back. Oh, actually, I'm going to read this because I haven't handed it out to anybody else. From Bruce Seifer, Nat was a dear man who cared so much about our community. Every time I saw him, he always had a twinkle in his eye. We always chatted before and after a show when I would go to CCTV to film a show. Nat was solid, always there making sure everything worked, and it always did. What defined Nat to me was his presence of mind, the ability to remain calm, and take quick, sensible action. He had the presence of mind to record the scene on video. And Bruce said, thank you. Thank you.
I may have more stories, but I don't know what they are right now. Thank you, Lars. Lars is going to give us a little musical interlude, Forever Young. You're stealing my thunder. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I, this was going to be a surprise, uh, but and the reason why I'm sitting down it's twofold. One is that I don't have a strap for this guitar, and number two is that I'm just a few months away from getting a new hip, so I'm in kind of a little bit of a shaky uh, stature right now. Um, Linda is correct. Uh, I did perform, well, we've known each other f since way back, and this song that I'm going to do, I hate to say that I, have to, that I had to relearn it, and seeing this uh, group of people here is probably going to make me wish that I hadn't offered this to come and sing this, but <laughs> I sang this song for uh, Linda and Nat's wedding, I sang it for Louie and Patty's wedding, I sang it for probably my friend uh, John Bennett and Linda Suttonfield's wedding. I sang it for Phil and Ellie, and I sang it for uh, Bill Joplin and uh, Val's wedding. So, one would think I would know it by heart. But, you know, these lyrics, they get away from you over time. And, um, you know, I've never really focused on uh, my guitar playing like I have on my woodworking. So I was a member of the I was one with up in Depot Woodworking with Nat, and I will say that I'm as nervous now as I was sitting in Nat's living room when he first was making videos, and I asked him if he would indulge me to shoot some video of me playing some songs, I, you know, Dylan songs, of course. <laughs> and uh, b some years ago, uh, Nat had uh, committed a lot of those videos to uh, CD or DVD or whatever. And so I got a bunch of them and I was sort of shocked because Nat really followed this community around with his video camera. And if you've seen some of his earlier video stuff, you would think that he's like in Pamplona, you know, running away from the bulls because they're pretty shaky. They're, you know, it's, it's all over the place, but I think he got much better at it. And I remember one that he would go, I see Andrick out here, and Andrick's uh, dad, a good friend, passed away recently, and Nat would come out to the basketball courts and, and watch us all, you know, parade up and down the court. And so Nat was really a, 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 chron a, cr a chronicler of, of, of the events of Burlington. And I hope that those videos or those, whatever the stuff he's captured has, uh, has found a, a good home and can, you know, obviously will take a little bit of you know, cleaning up to, to make good, but anyway. Um, so anyway, this is a song that I was going to do as a surprise, but Linda called me yesterday as I was driving down here and asked if I was coming, so I guess the cat was out of the bag. And I'm a little nervous, but I think I'll get through it here. I mean, if, if I boom, are you going to hear me okay? Do I need the mic? I think you're okay. You can move that mic. Yeah. You can just tilt it toward me. You know, I'm just... My musical career was always just, you know, one full house shy of the big stage. <laughs> Big 
God bless and keep you always. May your wishes all come true. May you always do for others and let others do for you. May you build a ladder to the sky and climb on every road. May you stay. I should start again. I'm going to. May God bless and keep you always. May your wishes all come true. May you always do for others. Let others do for you. May you build a ladder to the stars and climb on every rung, and may you stay forever young. Forever young. Forever young. May you stay. around you. May you always be courageous, stand upright and be strong, and may you stay forever young, forever young. So we have a few testimonials from folks who have written in that um, some of our friends are going to read. So if you could come on up and read those, that would be great. I know there's at least two of you. Um, and it would be just keep in mind as you're thinking about um, some reflections on that that you may be making. It will be helpful to come up here and make them so everyone can hear. So why don't you come on up? Welcome. Hi, I'm Andrick, and uh, Linda called and asked if I would read a poem that my mother, Alexandra, wrote for Nat. Wow. Yeah, I know, it's really sweet. Um, here it is. Uh, belatedly, here's my birthday poem to Nat, written August 09. He's turning 60, my old friend Nat. He no longer smokes, and that is that. He continues to toke. He still thrives on Dylan. I ask, God willing, 
For the rest of his life, may he live without strife, surrounded by food, love, and laughter. Hugs, Alexandra. That's it. So I'm Suzanne, and I've known Linda since God was born, and some of you in the room as well. And um, I didn't have the privilege of knowing Ham Davis, but Amy said, would I read this for Ham? Those of you who know him. Ham Davis played hockey in high school and college, so he knows who a good hockey player is. He and Nat played in a pickup game together, and Ham knew Nat was good. The moment he saw him on the rink, Nat didn't have hockey gloves, so Ham give, gave his to Nat. If they picked teams, he would want Ham and Nat on the same team. Thank you, Linda, for everything. So the floor is now open for those of you who may want to make some reflections around that. Brian, would you like to come on up? That's a great public access technique. Ask someone who you haven't spoken to before. But um, So Nat was, um, as you all know, quite a character. And my memory of Nat that stands out at City Council in the 90s, we had a moment of time where a couple of I would say belligerent city councilors were really after CCTV and they were accusing it of all kinds of things. And Nat would produce these meetings. He would record these meetings and the, the vitriol and the sort of venom of people on the council was amazing. And I said to him one night, how do you do this? How do you put up with this? Because they're saying stuff about UNLG and I just want to yell at them. And he just said, no, actually, all we're doing is recording it so that everyone knows what they're saying, and that's enough right there. That's all we need to do. Um, he, he did something that I just want to share, which is so touching that I, I, uh, I think I can say it, but um, our first child was, Liz was pregnant with Austin, our first kid, and Nat was so excited for us, and he said, I've got this cradle, and I made it, probably for all the kids. Perhaps. Toby was the, okay, so Toby got to rock in this cradle. And um, of course, Nat said, but I have to do a little bit of tuning up of it before you can have it, because it's not quite ready. And uh, Austin arrived a little early, and I called up Nat and said, Nat, I think the cradle is like now. <laughs> and he said, oh, I'm not quite ready, but I will be ready. And Austin arrived, and the cradle wasn't there yet. I realized it doesn't really matter. Once you have a kid, you learn that it doesn't matter. But Nat showed up with it a few days later, and he had like taken it and cleaned it up and polished it and got this beautiful, I think it was cherry or walnut, it was some really gorgeous piece of furniture that he made, and he set it up with me, and um, <laughs> he brought cloth diapers with him. And I thought, that's an interesting thing to do. What are you doing? He goes, I'm going to turn you on to these cloth diapers. These are the best thing you'll ever have. As a woodworker, I still use the cloth diapers for my children. <laughs> so we used this rocking cradle with Austin for a while, and it was okay, but we were that family that chose to keep the baby in the bed, and we told Nat, and he's like, that's not such a great idea. They're going to depend on it. And we're like, that's okay. We sleep better. So <laughs> six months later, I said, Nat, you know, we're just not using it right now. What do we do? And he said, just find someone else who's going to love it, whose kid is going to love it. And um, he used to ask, who got the cradle? Mm -hmm. Today, I don't remember because that was 27 years ago. But nonetheless, it was so touching that he cared that much to, to do that. And what an incredible person and gifted human being in so many ways. And we're lucky to have him. Thanks for sharing him with us. Somehow we ended up with that cradle also, <laughs> five years later. So I don't know the path it took, but it was quite extraordinary. It was very big and it rocked and it was, it was great. Is Joe McNeil here? I don't think he is, that's right. Peter, would you mind coming on up? Thank you. 
Uh, I'm Peter Clavel, and I have the uh, distinct honor of having attended approximately 500 city council meetings <laughs> in my life. And that was at many, many, many of them. And just picture when the city council meeting is about to start, you have a little small talk, and that would be there with always this mischievous grin on his face and a chuckle. And it wasn't until I left office in 2006 that I figured out what the hell that was about. Because <laughs> I, what I thought, what many of us thought, counselors, department heads, that aren't we big shots? Here we are on television. You know, there's the TV cameras, there's Nat, and we're gonna be on TV tonight. And my mother can watch us, and anybody else can watch us. And that, I finally figured out, his chuckle was about, you damn fool. This is not about you being cool. It's about us, the citizens, holding you accountable. So we have a record of what you're saying, and we're gonna hold you accountable. And I really believe that. And then later in my life, when I left the, the, uh, the mayor's office, I went on to work in international development. And much of my work was designing and implementing local governments, projects in developing countries. And always a fundamental principle of the project was to promote local governance that is open, that is transparent, that is accountable. And I wanted so dearly to take the best practices from Burlington and apply those to these projects in developing countries. And oftentimes I would say that we would, that we would do, that we would record uh, local council meetings and put, put them on public access TV. We never did it. Why didn't we do it? Because it's so damn difficult to pull together all the pieces the access piece, the finance piece, the technology to get the engagement of all the stakeholders. It was just incredibly difficult to pull off. And it took me being away from city government for a while to figure out that you, LG, and Nat, and CCTV, you figured out a way to do it. This was not done by city government. This was not done by any institution. It was done by you crazies that felt that we should deepen democracy in this community. And that's Nat's legacy, is that he worked so hard to do that, to hold accountable folks like me, and as a result, Burlington in Vermont is one of the most small d democratic places on the planet Earth. So thank you, Nat. <laughs> While you're thinking that you're going to come up and talk, I just want to read a little quote from Nat to this point, Peter's point. <clears throat> hmm. Oh, here it is. It's very tiny. And it's outside on a, a, a memo that I didn't know we actually had, um, we'd had, we had, he had written. With its programs, this was a Arts Council grant in 1985. With its programs, CCTV wishes to inform, <clears throat> encourage, complement, and inspire the community of Burlington to interact and initiate activity amongst themselves even more than they do already. And in a peaceful manner. I hope that my shows help viewers become aware of the incredible world around them, that even with the extensive coverage, there's a whole lot more than even what they see on the TV set. I want kids to ask their parents to take them to a Jugglers from Mars practice. And it's great to hear that someone was moved by a story on the meals a la carte or a Vermont Youth Orchestra performance. Awareness. I want to promote awareness. Let people know.
Doreen, would you like to share some thoughts? Hey, I'm Rebecca. I was Nat's caregiver the last couple of years. And um, boy, I didn't get to know that side of Nat um, that everybody here is talking about. He was already pretty um, intellectually diminished, I guess, having a hard time. But boy, did I look forward to going to see Nat. He was so much fun. And you know that, Linda, that um, I had so much fun with him. And in the beginning, when I was at your house taking care of him, and we used to be able to like take him to the petting zoo and for walks by the lake and take him to my house and hang out with my kids, and that was the best when he could come there. And he loved all the hullabaloo and the the action going on and he'd just kind of wander around from room to room uh, with a big smile on his face and a sparkle in his eye and he'd just fit in so comfortably and um, all the kids loved him and he we could tell that he loved being there and um, there was an authenticity about Nat um, without I see that, that it seems to be a common thread that everybody's talking about here, but it really was, must have been deep, deep in his soul because it stayed with him forever, um, even towards the end there when, you know, if he was mad, you would know it. <laughs> and uh, if he was glad, he, you would know it. And we spent many wonderful afternoons just like looking at, there was a picture book of orchids. Do you know that book, Linda? We spent like three hours one day looking at that book. And he would turn the page and just be amazed, truly amazed, and um, make me aware of the beauty there too that I would have quickly moved past if not for him. So thank you. I've loved getting to know your family and Nat, and I miss him. I'm Dorian Kraft. Um, we got a wonderful evening together, Marvin, Linda, and I, a few nights ago, and this memory came flooding back, which was another one of those times, um, and I might have been at a city council meeting, but it was definitely within um, an event taking place in, in Burlington, and I was very upset by the way that I was treated by some of the city councilors. And it was a break during the evening and we were out in the lobby and I was talking to Nat and fuming and I was kind of apoplectic about just how could anyone be so cruel. And Nat turned around and he said to me, I think maybe you heard them differently than what they meant to say. And he started reinterpreting what was said, trying to make me feel better. And I had never had that kind of a conversation where, you know, um, it was so personal and so deeply felt and um, so appropriate. Um, for a time that was rough for me. And um, it was a lovely part of him that I've experienced um, more often than um, I can remember, and not just towards me, but towards perfect strangers. And um, it was a great part of who he was. So thank you. One of the great things that Nat did, as was mentioned, is that he was so curious. Our motto at CCTV was for inquiring minds. And he would cover, he would look in the Burlington Free Press 
every morning and see what was happening. And one of his particular loves was storytelling festivals. And one of his particular, particular loves was Peter Burns. Nat was uh, incredibly generous. Uh, I did performance artwork, which was experimental at that time in the 80s. Um, he took, it must have been hundreds of hours of, uh, of video of it. And when I stopped doing that, he compiled all of it and he gave it to me. I didn't ask him. And that was just characteristic of his generosity. I never knew exactly what he thought about the work I did. He had a kind of a quizzical look when <laughs> he was, but he never commented on it. You know, he was, he was the camera person and he just uh, recorded it, for which I am tremendously grateful. But I always kind of wanted him to say something nice about it. Um, but then, uh, Doreen Craft actually helped me get a grant where I went to uh, various places where city workers uh, do their jobs. I went to the airport and uh, we recorded a, a little session with the, the, the men. They were men, mostly men at the time, who do the maintenance work on the airport. And there was a basketball court or a basketball hoop and these guys didn't always have a lot to do so they would play these complicated games of horse and do trick shots. And so I picked up the basketball and I did a couple of shots and Nat said, hey, you got a great jump shot. And I was, I was said, yeah, I still treasure that. That was like, really, that I had finally done something to impress him after all those years of making art and I still treasure that memory. Thank you. And I just, a quick reminder, pretty much everything we're talking about is in the CCTV archives because Nat, um, in addition to the little post-it notes, you'll notice there's a Sharpie out there. And Nat um, cataloged every single program that we produced and he would write on the spine of the VHS tapes with a Sharpie, he needed a very particular kind. And they were all cataloged in books that he would write by hand and then he would type up. There's an example out there. And now we have an archive of about 41,000 programs of which he probably produced 25,000 of those programs. I may be overstating, but you understand just the dimension and scope of this legacy that Nat has left us. Michael Monti. Um, I um, wasn't gonna tell a story about me and Nat, but I was remembering the first time he filmed me and we were doing the bike path. And he said, I said, what are we gonna do? I was 1986 and I said, he said, we're just going to go out there and you're going to just start talking. So he just turned the camera on and said, go. <laughs> that was the production value we had at that point. And I would just say, what do you mean? And I would just sort of gesture and start talking about different parts of where we were at in terms of developing it. I wasn't going to tell that story. What I was going to say uh, was that um, Whenever, like all of you, whenever you would see Nat, you would get a little twinkle, a little chuckle, a little rip apart, a little, you know, back and forth. And, um, but then Nat would start talking, and you'd always get a sense that he was seeing the world for the first time. That these were fresh eyes to the, everything that was going on around him. It was brand new to him. Whatever it was, even if he knew about it, it always seemed like knew. And I think he brought that to the camera. And I think we, that is his legacy. And I think we get a chance to now see that all the time with his uh, fresh eyes. So thank you. Spencer Lewis, did you want to say something? Well, it's kind of part of what I'd say. Got it. OK. Well, there is no, there's more to, okay, there's more to yeah, say, we, but he's going to say a whole thing. Uh, yeah. yeah, it was just, um, uh, you know, uh, my, when I got married in uh, first marriage, uh, we were in this meadow, and 
Job came driving in with a Fiat 122 and said, this is from Nat. <laughs> so that was kind of cool. <laughs> uh, of course, in those days, you know, I got, you know, was having a kid and uh, didn't own a car. So, uh, and uh, I remember he loaned me, uh, you know, the, uh, the first biography of uh, Woody Guthrie uh, back when they were just discovering everything from him. And uh, I don't know if I even knew about it, but he loaned me that copy for a while. A bunch of years, I think. I finally had to buy another one to give it back to him. But, um, you know, and then, of course, all the bootlegs we got long before. Uh, they're all out now, of course, in pristine uh, quality. But uh, uh, they really helped a lot in those years. So I would just think that I'm not sure if this is a favorite of his, but uh, he might have thought about Linda when this song was coming on. My love just speaks like silence Now I feel my love Don't have to say she's faithful She's too like ice and fire Thank you, Spencer. When we um, were trying to get music for our channel, there was uh, then, as there are now, a lot of licensing fees. And so it was hard to get music. But Spencer, Nat, wanted local music. And Spencer Lewis was one of the mainstays of our channel music, along with the Vermont Youth Orchestra and other local musicians who graced the channel. Dan Higgins, welcome. This is, I've been sitting here trying to figure what I could say about Matt uh, Knapp because I've, I've known him so long. And there's two, I've finally f cut it down to two stories. And one is in the early days when we were doing video, it was before camcorders even, there were cameras and there were decks and and there's, a, there's something that happened with CCTV, which if you look at the old tapes, you'll notice all of the titles 
that Nat did were handwritten up to a certain point. And there was a point where suddenly the computer came in and the digital world happened and now the, 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 the titles were all uh, done with the computer. I, I was really upset when that happened. They were all, he, he would, it's, you know how he'd scribble things. He would, they, all the titles of the early CCTV shows were handwritten by Nat. And that was a real breakthrough that, when that stopped. Um, that's one thing I remember. And the other thing is that in, in the year 2000, um, Nat and CCTV, um, the whole, all of us, you know, you know went down and we introduced um, the concept of public access television in Nicaragua to Burlington Sister City. Uh, they had, the cable had come in and people were, well, were, they were watching television. They weren't always paying for it, but they were watching television and it was mostly soap operas from Brazil and so forth. And we went down there, uh, CCTV gave us some old VHS editing equipment. We took five cameras and we got the local university to put on the radio that uh, anybody who wanted to learn how to do video could come. And for three months we were down there um, teaching people from all different walks of life. And then we got the local cable company to open up one hour a night. And that was the start of people seeing their own lives on television. And it was amazing. It's the same thing that happened here you know, when, when public access first started showing people that they knew their neighbors were on, on, uh, on television. And it was, it was amazing. And uh, Nat was a big part of that. He, I can tell you more stories about Nicaragua, but I, those are the two things that I wanted to comment on. Megan, Megan O'Rourke. Yeah, like, I have like five or eight or 20 stories in my mind. <laughs> and I wouldn't be anywhere else but behind the camera today. Because I went to nat University, <laughs> like LG and nat University. So I started working for CCTV a long time ago. But even before that, when I was about 16, if you go into the archives, I found footage of myself dancing as part of the mayor's youth office and at uh, first night. And it was recorded by Nat, which I was like, I'm like, we probably have lived multiple lives together. And um, so we worked together since I was probably about 23. And I learned so much from Nat. And like Peter, I would wait for some positive piece of feedback. <laughs> And when, you know, um, I recorded the Pomerleau um, Christmas events for a number of years, and those Nat would say to me, good, good, good job, good job, you know, something, something, but, um, and not always easy to work for, because you would be waiting for that feedback. Um, but I just, I've learned, you know, so much of my life I have gotten and learned from Nat and um, that's I it. You, Megan. Yeah, Thank I loved him a great deal. Yep. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Bob Davis. Uh -huh. I think the first time I really met and knew Nat, I think was when I was living with Kent Cassell across the street from uh, Adsic Court. And I remember we were talking about music and Nat was like, come on, I'm going to show you my Dylan collection. I'm going, okay, okay. And then go down, and, well, isn't some of the basement? And it was like wall to wall Dylan. <laughs> then when he started working at CCTV, I was thinking, man, they're in trouble because they don't know how many tapes Nat's going to be able to produce. <laughs> uh, but where I really got to know Nat was as a news photographer for WCX-TV. And we were kind of comrade in arms at uh, city council meetings, and that's really where I got to know Nat a lot. And uh, sorry, Peter, but I think Nat and I probably had you beat for how many city council meetings we attended. <laughs> so. Um, 
I started in 1981. I don't, when was Bernie elected? 81. 81? Yeah, so uh, kind of the rest is history, right? All right. So um, I was young. I felt like I knew what I was doing. I knew very little. And that was just really starting out as well. And of course, we had all this amazing gear, and that was just kind of still plugging the cans together and getting the cables. And I would attend city council meetings. I worked Monday nights because I like skiing on Monday morning. And I would run around with my camera, having to get stuff turned around for the 11 o'clock news, and I'd be you know, running here, doing there, and capturing stuff. And that would be just stalwart Matt sitting, standing in his position and taking it all in. And he would watch me, he'd ask me a bunch of questions, and you know, I'd help him out with a few things. But that really helped me because I would run around crazy, pretty schizo, capturing things. And Nat would be sitting there absorbing. And there's a big difference. And, you know, after a while, we, we learned that. And we learned how to kind of really work in kind of a dynamic team. We wouldn't have to say anything, but we would look across the city council hall at each other and just go, yep, you know. And uh, it was kind of one of these tortoise and hare things. I would be fast and I'd be jumping on things, but Nat would be just standing there and he would get the things that I would miss, you know. So a uh, good lesson like, reflective of Nat's behavior and his style, his demeanor, to just sit there and absorb it all in and, and get smarter and smarter, you know. So he was a great guy. We spent a long time together. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Bye. Yeah, good night. Running here, doing there, and capturing stuff, and that. Hey. And we learned how to how kind of really work in uh -huh. kind of a dynamic how team. Are you we wouldn't have to say anything, but we would look across the city council hall at each other and just go, yep, yeah. you know. And uh, know it was kind of one of these tortoise and Okay. Sit there and absorb it all in and, oh, okay. and get smarter and smarter, you know. So he was a great guy. We spent a long time together. <laughs> Thanks. What's the matter? Oh.